watching Capital View. Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And welcome back to the program. Joined now by Arkansas Attorney General Tim Griffin. Always good to have you on the show, sir. Thank you, my friend. Right. Sorry I had to dress up today. Uh, well, you know, I dress up I every day. I normally like to wear the jeans and hide them under here. That your normal uh, towards the weekend uh, uh, Look, attire. this day. is what I wear all weekend, right? All right. Uh, the Supreme <clears throat> Court of the United States has been quite busy this past week. I just want to single out one ruling uh, that happened because there was some legislative action in this space as well on affirmative action. Um, did the Supreme Court end affirmative action in your mind, or did they just overturn race-based decision making for colleges. Well, as, as it applies to, as it involves race, I think uh, they put a big marker down to say, look, uh, the Constitution is colorblind. And, uh, you know, I remind people that the Constitution doesn't say what we want it to say. It says what it says. And uh, so I, I'm not surprised by this ruling. In fact, we had several issues here in Arkansas right. that involved uh, minority set-asides. Like, you have to have pigment in your skin to get this job. Certain, you, know, you have to be of a certain race to get this job. We knew that was not going to fly. We thought that that's where this opinion was going, and that's exactly what they said. And uh, we, I'm thinking in particular about the minority set aside for the Minority Health Commission, and we settled a lawsuit uh, on that. So not surprising, and uh, I think it's a good decision. Do you think that the playing field is level for people in terms of color in I the think, state? A, abs I think that legally it is. Legally it is. Uh, but the law, sometimes there is a difference between law and reality. Uh, and sometimes there's not. I think that if, I th is every family able to provide the same opportunities? Of course not. But that's not a constitutional issue. That's a societal issue. Um, but in terms of uh, the ability of, peop of people of color to become president of the United States or anything else they want to become, I absolutely believe that that is 100% possible, and I don't even have to opine on that because we've had a president of the United States. Right. So, look, I, I, Morgan Freeman has a great, uh, has a lot of great comments on this, and um, and I think it, what basically he has said is, look, uh, there are so many examples of people of color succeeding in this country. And uh, at its core, I think it is more damaging to have this, this artificial carve out than it is to just let the Constitution truly be uh, colorblind, which is which is where we're going. Well, he played God, so you know, in a movie. All right, your he, um, he did indeed. Your FOI um, Freedom of Information Act working group is more of a kitchen cabinet, if you want my personal opinion. Kitchen. On this. You call it however you want to, but it's not going to submit a report to the legislature. I don't think it's not going to put anything formal out there. What do you want this group to do? Give me advice on um, what we might can do to improve our FOIA law. Um, you know, some people want to treat the FOIA law uh, as if it belongs between the U.S. Constitution uh, and, and the Bill of Rights, the uh, Declaration of Independence, um, and uh, in Washington, the archives. But the fact is, it's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. And it has been updated over the years. And we're looking to make sure that, that we do that. Uh, we look at all the opportunities to do that. Again, I, you know, I just, I would point, bring your attention to something that a lot of the, quote, experts on FOIA probably aren't even aware of. But there was a report on FOIA by the Electronic Records Study Commission back in 2000. They made recommendations for amendments to the FOIA. And one of the things they said is, individual privacy issues may need to be reconsidered and rebalanced against public access in light of emerging technologies. Sure. That's what we're doing. And uh, we're looking at that. We're going to look at everything else. But these are people who are meeting with me to give me advice. And one thing I want to mention that really is driving a lot of my interest here was the um, ransomware issue with Little Rock School District. So Little Rock School District was a victim of ransomware. And the way the FOIA law is currently written, they have to discuss their strategy on dealing with ransomware in public. That's ridiculous. That's like asking the U.S. Army to strategize and plan a battle 
in public. No, wrong. We've got to change that. And you know, this really came to my attention. I read some about it in the paper, but then uh, Senator Clark Tucker asked for an official opinion. We said, yes, your understanding is right. There are no exemptions for discussions like that being private. That is exhibit A, that perfection has not been reached, sure. and we need to look at ways to bring it into 2023. Let's address some of the criticism that's come from people that don't like what you're planning to do here. One of the things is that you're going to be meeting in private with these people for this advice that you're going to be seeking and not in public. You could do both. You, I, you, you I, could. You could. Yeah. You could have some public meetings with this group if you wanted to, and you could have some private meetings with this group. Are you? Would you consider that? I don't. I don't. I don't think I need to. Um, I meet in private in my office all day, every day. This is not a reality show. Uh, I literally, literally have hundreds, if not thousands, of meetings every year, uh, and they're not public. That's the law doesn't require they be public. The law doesn't contemplate that right. they be public. I'm just asking you from a PR perspective. Yeah, you I do a ton of stuff publicly. Well, let, let's talk about what's public. So, well, I, I don't want to I go didn't, deep well, into that. Let's I didn't even FLI. have to. I didn't have to tell people I was having people over for lunch at right. my table. Right. I have lunch at my table with people. All the, I did it because I knew there were a lot of people interested. Uh, I think some of the people who have raised the most stink would not have raised the most stink if they would have been at the lunch. But I understand they want to be, they want to know what's going on. Look, there are a lot of meetings I wish I was in. But the bottom line is these are folks that are going to give me advice and I can take it or leave it. Right. Uh, two of them are staff, three of them are legislators. It's, sens it's a sensitive topic, so you understand why, where the criticism is coming from I do, from here, but, I do, but, so, but, but, but let me just say this. The law doesn't require or contemplate it being public. If all of my meetings like this were public, it would be completely unworkable. Sure, sure. And uh, that would be like the governor and every other elected official inviting the public into every meeting. You want to address some, some things that are out there that haven't been contemplated in the law. I get the example that you brought up right there, but can you commit to saying on this show today that you will not allow the FOI law to be weakened in the state of Arkansas? Well, I don't know what weakened means. If that means, um, if it means, if weakened means no amendments, no changes, well, I'm not going to promise that because that's the whole point of this. Sure. Of this. Um, if weakened means limiting the amount of access that the public can have to public records, is would would you allow that to happen? Well, I'm going to allow it to happen with ransomware. I just said that. Yeah. So uh, can you look, think of other circumstances? Though? No, I can't. But but this is this is the whole issue. The people who don't want to have a conversation about FOIA, what they really mean is. They don't want anybody to do anything. And there are people that make money off FOIA. Mm -hmm. They don't want the money gone that they're making. And there are people who have a vested interest in FOIA. We all have an interest in FOIA in making sure we have a robust FOIA law. But I'm not going to prejudge what the people on the uh, advisory, on the working group, come up with. But let me just say this for the public who, who may not know. The working group has on it the executive director of the Arkansas Press Association, the number one defender and guardian of the FOIA, okay? And John Tull, who is the number one or co-guardian or, or number two guardian of the FOIA, uh, and, and others, certainly, because unlike some of the other groups that talk about FOIA, my group's not one-sided. Yeah. My group will have critical thinking and problem solving. All right. I've got to take us out of this interview yep. on uh, air, but will you stick around for a little online yes. extra? After yes. This? We all went right. too long. I'm yeah. sorry. That's all right. Attorney General Tim Griffin, thank you. Thanks. As always, we're back with more right after this.